I do. And is anybody in a hurry? Does anyone have a bid due at five or in a major hurry or bid due first thing in the morning would like to start? Nope. Anybody got a question or a bid solicitation or proposal they want to work on today? John Steeman, Skyhawk Drone Services. Yes, sir. Uh, um, so with respect to the two um, contracts we won uh, today, yeah. um, the, when we had, well, when we previously submitted our bid for um, this contract, uh, we were going to use um, a boat to carry out our aerial um, photography on uh, the water based on the uh, statement of work. Okay. However, the, the government came back and said they wanted this done uh, uh, in a day and they wanted the use of um, um, a helicopter, which uh, is somewhat uh, going to change uh, the cost uh, per hour. Okay. So, should we go back to the um, the officer, the contracting officer, and say, "Look, this is what's happening now"? Yes, if it's going to make a major difference. If it's going to make a little difference, and you're not going to lose that much money, I would let it let it slide. Um, you know, I had a client last week. He said we we had something come up, and blah blah blah, and we're going to lose like five hundred dollars worth of profit if we don't change it. But we're still making ten grand in profit. And I'm like, you know what, just just let it go. Let the 500 bucks go. If it's not a big amount that you're going to lose, there's no sense modifying or making the purchasing officer's job any, diff any more difficult. But if you're going to lose a substantial amount of money, then you need to go back and renegotiate. Now, okay. every right. government contract says that it is 100% non-negotiable. That is, that, is, uh, that is horse poopy. <laughs> um, and here's why. Everything is negotiable. Doesn't matter. Everything is negotiable. Always. There's too many. There's too many factors that are outside of our control. When they ask you to give them a quote that's good for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, that's fine. But what happens if there's a hurricane and the state of Florida is shut down and, and now they have to ship it from somewhere else and now the shipping costs are higher or that particular warehouse was leveled? You know, I mean, any number of things can happen that can change. And, and make it so that you have to negotiate. So best thing to do, if it's not a big big difference in money and you can eat it and it's not that big deal, just let it go. Don't make their job any more difficult. If it is a big deal, reach out to the purchasing agent and just be honest with them. Hey, this happened, therefore this price needs to change to this. Is that still, will that still work? Understood, understood. I, I just want to get you, um, your advice on that. Thank you, sir. Um, we need to go back to them um, primarily because of the uh, helicopter cost. Yeah, yeah. I've seen everything. I've seen where people went back to uh, renegotiate and the government canceled the contract. I've seen where people went back to renegotiate and the government said, no problem, we'll pay you the additional money. Um, I've even seen where a client for whatever reason was able to get the product for cheaper. So they told the government, they told the purchasing agent that they were going to lower the price because they could get it for cheaper, which in that case, I would have just shut my mouth and let it ride. They already, they already awarded it, you know? Right. Um, and I've seen where, uh, I've seen a contract that was awarded to one of my clients, uh, competitors, the people he was going to sub it out to. And then they did something that the government didn't like. So the government redacted it. And then they awarded it to him, and he subbed it back out to them. And, and they, he's had that for four years now. So the company that, that uh, he's subbing it to is the ones that they awarded it to originally and then took it back from. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> stranger things. But congratulations um, again. Well, thank you, sir. Um, let's see if we can continue with this. Um, I, we do have to reach back to the uh, purchasing agent. Yeah. Uh, you're the, you're the 14th person that's been on my training in the last two days that's won a contract. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. But it's like I keep telling you guys, just stay at it. Don't give up. Keep your head up. Keep throwing stuff at the wall. Something's going to stick eventually. You just got to keep the faith and keep at it. Yes, sir. 
And for those of you that don't know that weren't on the earlier training, Stephen last week had a couple of contracts that he bid on that he should have won that were canceled and he was getting frustrated. It, it can be frustrating if you don't win the first five or 10, you know, that can be frustrating. You got to stick to your guns. You got to trust me on this and stick to your guns. If you keep submitting bids, you're going to win some. Anybody else got a question, bid, solicitation, proposal to work on? Um, I do have it for the state one. I'll send you email. Okay, excellent. Any anybody else got a bid, solicitation, proposal, question? Anybody got a good uh, yeah. recipe for buttermilk pie? <laughs> hey John, this is uh, Billy Kent with RPC. I'm sending you an email right now. Okay. I got a uh, I got an email, an introductory email from this guy on. Uh, looking at his NAICS code and everything, he sent me his cap statement. He would be the perfect uh, company to, to team up with, to staff, the call centers if, if he won those bids. Okay. So I tried to set the meeting with him, and then I looked at the domain on the email email address that he sent me the initial email from, mm -hmm. and it looks like it's one of your competitors. Like he acted like a company – can you look? Did you get the email from Billy Kent yet? Let me uh, let me pull it up. And it very well could be our competitors do anything they can, lie, cheat, and still try and keep up with us. And ironically, they never will. I mean, we have there's only about 160,000 small businesses that are active in SAM right now, and we've done 80,000 SAM registrations. All of our competition combined makes up about five percent of the small businesses in SAM. We've got 50. So these guys will do or say whatever it takes to get your money. Always check with me first, and that's what you're doing. Excellent job. Our capability statement, because it all looked good, and I'm sure you saw your logo on there and didn't answer me back. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, forward that information to me. Or is, is this the email right here? Yeah, Billy, yeah. Billy Kent. No, the first one, Mira one. See that? samaccount.com, samacct.com. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's claiming to be the Department of Labor uh, quality manager for the Department of Labor, but that's not a government email. Um, I'm hearing some background noise. If, if anyone who's not talking, if you could mute so we don't hear the background noise, I'd appreciate it. So what uh, what he's talking about is that he searched the who is on the domain, which is one of the things I teach you guys to do to not get scammed. Anytime sound, something sounds too good to be true, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, mute everybody because of the background noise that's really annoying. Um, <clears throat> anybody sends something and it sounds too good to be true, it, it, it may be or uh, if it looks fishy whatsoever, or if they're asking you for money, check with me first. Forward it to me, check with me first. If I'm not available, I have videos that show you how to detect scams so you don't get ripped off. Because if you know, I can make you money, that's one thing. If I can keep you from getting ripped off, that's just as good as making money. So what he's talking about is going to who is. Go to whois.com, put in their domain name, and you're looking for two, two, two things mainly. You're looking to see if their domain is public or private, and in this case, Sam's Contracting, Consulting, and Training, uh, Aaron Sam's, never heard of him, probably a new one that's popped up. Uh, in this case, his domain is marked private, so we don't know really where he is or who he is. Um, it was registered back in 2012, so he's been at it as a consultant for a while, <coughs> but it's a private domain, so that right off the bat is a, is a major flag. Um, if you look at our domain, our domain is not private it's public you can see our ceo's name and our, our company organization name you can see 
Whereas, um, well, you can see when we started it back in 2010, why is it not showing the details? Okay, let's try. There's another who is search called Network Solutions and Network Solutions uh, are the guys who basically originally started domain names on the internet. Um, there it is right there. <clears throat> Let me get a cough drop, guys. I am not a robot. Here's the domain info, and it has a physical street address on it. That's what you're looking for. We have nothing to hide. So our domain is public, and our physical address is attached to our domain. So if one of our clients wanted to climb out here or fly out here and, and see us, meet us, whatever, they can, because we don't, we don't hide from them. If someone has a public or a private domain, that's the first sign something fishy is going on. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. The second sign is the fact that let's see. That's not him. That's somebody out of Virginia. Um, I don't know. The whole thing sounds fishy to me. I just checked to see. I'd ask him, you know, if he wants money from me. If he wants money from me, it's definitely a scam. But if I had to guess just from what I'm saying, yeah, it's a scam. Any other questions? Anybody else got a question, bid, solicitation, something to work on? Looks like Mira's got yeah, something. Yeah, there are many. Yeah. I'm sorry for smacking in your ears, guys, but it's cough drops are. Okay, what's your question on this? Scroll down. Okay, these are all the solicitations coming to my email. I don't know if it is related to medical billing or what I have to do it. Alternate payment option for the division of child support. Hmm. Um, not sure. I folk, I primarily specialize in, well, I specialize in federal government contracts. I'm not a state contract specialist in any way, shape, or form, I never will claim to be. Because I'd have to do a contract in every state, and every state's different. Every county, every city's different. So, mm -hmm. I, I just honestly, I don't know a whole lot about state contracts. Okay. Doesn't look like medical billing to me. Looks like your search terms are, are bringing up too much stuff that's not a good fit. Okay, because I'm getting them in the email. Mm -hmm. and can you show me one sample of medical billing like RFA or anything request? Uh, how does it look? I haven't seen anything. Do you do subrogation? No. What is that? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. I just know it's one of my client uh, won a contract for medical billing subrogation, and it's it's in the billions and millions. I don't know that. I think subrogation is the act of finding mistakes in software that make up hmm. little tiny, minute. Uh, fractions of a penny but when you add them all together they can equal millions of dollars uh, if anybody's ever seen the movie I'm gonna mute you guys again because there's some really bad background noise and it's it's 
it's harsh. It's actually hurting my ears. Um, if anybody's seen that movie Office Space, the whole concept of Office Space was based on on that theory that there are fractions of pennies that are lost in the system, but it happens so frequently those fractions of pennies can add up quickly and become millions and millions of dollars. And I think that's what subrogation is, is the uh, act of finding those mistakes or those glitches and fixing them to save the government that money. Under medical billing, it's $2 million, uh, $235 million in contracts that have been awarded under medical billing. There's been $20 million done under subcontracts. In FPDS, <laughs> that's in USA Spending. That only tracks about 10%. FPDS only tracks about 10%. <clears throat> In FPDS, there's 2,400, which is about 10% of the spending. So it's probably about 24,000 total under medical billing. And they range 16, 14, 87, 24,000, 34,000, 30,000, 30,000, 56,000, 900 bucks, 17,000. So it ranges in pricing. Uh, largest contract in their medical billing in here ever, 12 million, 11 million. And again, this system tracks less than 10% of the spending. So more than likely there's other contracts that were bigger. They're just not showing them because it doesn't show all the spending. Make sense? Yeah, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Anybody else got a question, bid, solicitation, proposal, something to work on? Hi, John. Uh, I spoke with you yesterday. This is uh, Terrence from Bantam Electric. Yes. Uh, I did send you in a, a reloaded version of that cap statement. Uh, if you could look at it, by uh, Terrence Bantam, right there. I'm believing I sent you the wrong one yesterday, also, but much better. Okay. Yeah, get rid of the second page. Other than that, that's good. Okay, the second page still there? Yep. Oh my God, I can't get rid of that thing. Okay. I'll, I'll let me see what I can do. Yeah. It's probably because these logos are too close to the bottom. I, it's exactly what it is. Okay. I, I got a copy of it. Let me see what I can do. We'll I have Angela take a look at it. She's pretty good with these okay. things. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I thought I got rid of all of that. Yeah. Well, other than that, the rest is fine. Yeah, rest looks good, man. Good job. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I had a question also about the elevator pitch. Uh, uh, with the elevator pitch, are, are there several different types, one for the contracting officer, one for the procurement officer, and one for calling a prom? Is there a different twist to each Yeah, uh, pitch? to some extent. I suggest you write one to start with. And as mm -hmm. you as you modify that one for specific reasons, save it each time and name it for the new reason that you saved it. And then you're creating templates you can use down the road. Okay. 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 Because those are my next step. I should be ready by then. Excellent. Good job. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, John. No problem. Right, any other questions? Anybody else got a question, bid, solicitation, proposal? Not too bad. Uh, had some good questions today. I'll give it a few more minutes, see if anybody else logs in. There's nothing else in the chat window, and there's no other emails. So um, I'll give it a couple more minutes, see if anybody else logs in, and I'll go ahead and shut her down for today. Be back on tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel, one and four. You guys know the drill. If you want to get in, just email Gina. And if you've got a solicitation you want to work on, go into FBO or AFPDS, copy the link, like so. Copy this right here and email me this link. Either email it or pop it here in the chat, because then all I got to do when we're ready to work on it is click on it. I don't have to go search in and, and waste time in the training while everybody's patiently waiting. 
um, and email Gina if you guys want to get in. And other than that, I guess I'll wrap it up for the day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, sir. You got it. And any of you guys that are a big fan of, of music, some of you know I'm in a band. I just posted one of our original songs today, too, if you want to check it out. It's on my, it's on my, my media. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thank you, John. You got it.